Did you know Photoshop has its very own built-in flame render engine? Well, it does, and in this tutorial, we'll look at how to use it to create different flames of all sorts, and then we'll look at how to blend those with your photo to create a realistic result. All right, let's jump in. In this tutorial, we're going to take this image right here and we're going to add some flames down into the grill and have those flames coming up around our steak just to try to make this a more interesting image. And we're going to do it using a tool that most people do not even realize is in Photoshop, even though it's been here since 2014. And that is the flame render engine, the flame generator that is inside of Photoshop. You could obviously go out and find stock imagery of flames to blend into your image here. And there's almost always multiple solutions within Photoshop, but it's what is the right solution for you that gets the job done. And in this instance, rather than going out and spending that time looking for the perfect image, why not try out this flame generator? I think you would be surprised at how realistic of results you can get. So we're gonna walk through that flame generator here in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you exactly how you do it, and then we're gonna see what kind of results we can get with this image. First, let me turn off this layer here of our steak image on the grill. And below this, I have a layer with some different flames in here. Now, these were all flames that were created with Photoshop's flame render tool. And you can see I got drastically different looks here. And this is just only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the possibilities, you really can render out just about any sort of flame you want. And that sort of is one of the advantages of this approach because if you look for stock imagery, you're limited to those images you find where inside of Photoshop here, you can really design the flame from the bottom up the way you want it to look. Now it does take some practice, but the best way is just to get in here and experiment around. Now I'm not gonna cover every single uh, detail because there are a lot of options within the flame uh, render engine here, but we'll jump into it and we'll use it to create some uh, flames for this image. And then the best way for you to advance with this tool is just to experiment around and you'll start to get a feel for how to create the look you want. All right, so let's go about attacking this image here and I'm gonna show you how the flame render engine is used. All right, so I will go ahead and I will turn back on this top layer here. And then what you need to know is that the flame generator works on paths. So if you do not have a path, you are not gonna be able to create a flame. For example, I'll create a new layer here where I'm gonna have a flame on this layer, layer two. But if I come up here and I'll show you where it's located. If you come here under filter and you go down to render, you'll then see this flame. But if I click on this now with no path, it says a selected path is required to use this filter. So you need to have created a path and that path has to be currently selected for this to work. So let's go through that now and we'll see how it works. All right, so I'm gonna close that there and I will grab my curvature pen tool. You can curvature, use your curvature pen tool. You can use a shape tool. You can really use anything as long as you're creating a path. So for example, just for example here, I'm gonna come down here and I will use my fly out tools here. And even if I have this elliptical martic key here, as long as I have path selected, not shape, not pixels, but if I have a path and if I draw that out now, so I'm gonna make this big circle here. And then with this path selection tool, I will just drag that over here. And if I came up now, filter, and then down to render, and then to flame, you will see that now this is gonna work and now I'm gonna be able to create a flame to go with this image. So it's gonna take a little while here depending on your processor speed. This tool can take a little bit of time. I don't find it to be that bad, but if you use a big path like this, it is gonna take a little while. And you see how this is set up now, multiple flames on the path. You see you can do a cool circle like that. But as you come in here and you start to change these settings, it's going to drastically affect the look of your flame. Uh, so you have flame type here and under this you have six different options. I think the best thing for you to do is just to come in here and experiment around. So you have one flame along path, multiple flames, multiple flames one direction. Again, we're not gonna go through all of the details in here, but I'll show you a little bit and you will be able to experiment around and see what works for you. So I'm gonna go for one flame along path and then when you do that, you can change the width. And so if I pull that width way down, 
then you're getting something that's narrow. And if I pull that width way up, obviously you're getting something that's a little bit more crazy. So if I just do something crazy like that and click OK, we'll go ahead and we'll let that render out. So it's going to take a second here and it's going to render out. I'll fast forward it if I need to. But again, most of these paths are going to render out in just a couple seconds, depending on your processor speed. You can also set quality down here. I have it to fine, which is the slowest, but the best quality. So I recommend you choose that. Now I've got something very crazy here now, but look at how cool this is. And so this here might be something I want to use for this image. I'm obviously not going to use it just as is. But if I have a mask and I make this look like this is down in the grill, then that might be a pretty cool flame. So I'll just leave that for now and I'm going to turn it off for now. And then we're going to try to create some smaller flames here that might come up sort of coming up through the grill panes there and sort of licking around that steak. Uh, so I'll go ahead and turn that path off there. I'll just grab my curvature pen tool and I'm going to do something where I think I want the flames basically concentrated over here so maybe I'll have something that starts down here and I'll come up with something that curves like that then I'm going to control click just so I can start sort of a new path down here and I'll do something like this and then control click again so again I'm just experimenting around and if I get something I don't like I can mask it out I don't have to use it that's the great flexibility in this is that rather going out than going out on the web and looking for all these images and taking all that time, I can just sort of play around, create things on the fly, figure out what I like, what I don't like, and then I have all these assets and I'll we'll see how we blend them all in. So I'm just going to create something like that, a couple different squiggly lines there that I think maybe might represent sort of where I want flames to go. Again, this is all stuff you can come back and edit. So I'll come back to my layers here. I'm going to create a new layer because I want this to be created on a new layer so it's separate from that last flame. So again, up to filter, down to render, and I will choose flame. We'll give it a second to spin up here. Now obviously, this is totally crazy. I don't want to create something so crazy this time. So I'm going to pull this width way back. Let's see what we get. And so you see with the width down to 30, you're starting to get these cool individual flames there so that actually looks pretty good I might go ahead and click OK and see and you don't really know until it renders out exactly what you're gonna get uh, and remember you can still apply filters after the fact and you can create more flames like this so it really is about experimenting and just seeing what sort of flames you get and what you like and what you don't like so we'll give this another couple seconds and again it usually does not take that long to render out I'm on a relatively slow computer here, but it's still, it's going to render out in 5 or 10 seconds here, even though I did some pretty complex paths there, a bunch of different paths. Now it'll get mad at you if you do a really long path, it'll tell you it's too big, but still it usually renders out even those larger paths without taking too much time. Alright, I'll fast forward if I need to here, but I'm guessing I won't, because I'm guessing this should be done and returned in just a couple seconds. So let's see if we can wait it out, but if not, I will just fast forward this a little bit so you will not have to sit here and wait. But there we go. So we have these cool flames now, and if I turn off that path, we can see what I want. And of course, then you can start to reposition here. And I could have also done these as individual flames. Uh, I didn't have to do all those paths at once. So it's really up to you whether you want to create one flame or whether you want to create multiple flames and then you can move them around and do masking and things like that as you need. Uh, so I've got a couple flames now. I may create a couple more, but then I want to get into once you have these flames, how with this image are we going to blend it together and make it sort of a realistic image? Because obviously if we don't do some masking here and have the flame coming up through these, these grill panes, it's not going to look realistic. All right, so I'm not totally happy with these last few flames. So I'm going to create a couple more, but I will fast forward it so you don't have to watch me do this. Actually, before I fast forward it, I'll show you one more, and I'll just talk about a couple of the, a couple of the options within this flame generator. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to create something that's going to be a little bit bigger here because I, can, I know I can always transform it down and make it smaller. So I'm something like that, and I'm going to go filter. Again, I'll come up to my render engine here and flame. 
and we'll wait for a second for that to come up. And so just a couple of the different options. There are a lot of different options here. Uh, when I'm creating a single flame look for something like a, a grill image like this, usually one flame along path or sometimes multiple flames along path. So with one flame along path, you're going to get less options. And the big thing here is going to be the width. So if you go wider, you get something that's a little sprawling, a little bit bigger. And usually you want to, you know, pull that down a fair amount if you're trying to get more of a realistic, you know, flame image where it's not an out of control look. So something like that, that's pretty cool. Um, but if you come in and you start to do something like multiple flames along a path, then you're going to get a look like this with multiple flames. And that actually looks really good. So I like that a fair amount. But then you have even more options. Uh, length, we'll just see if I drag out length. That's not too uh, hard to figure out. It's making it longer there. So let me pull that back down a little bit. And I like that a lot. But again, you width, if you make width, you're going to be able to make something that's a lot wider. Obviously, that's way too much. It's easy to go overboard and get something that's sprawling, something that's really cool, but something that maybe isn't as controlled as you want for an image like that. So you can pull around, pull around with the width and then you have other things like interval. If you start to adjust this interval, it's sort of just think of the spacing between your individual flames. So you're getting more see-through areas because it's spacing it out a fair amount. Whereas if I pull this interval in, you really get this condensed a lot of flame within a given area. You're going to have less transparent see-through areas. So it sort of depends on the look you're going for. Uh, but this interval can be you know, an important uh, uh, sort of slider here when you're talking about a multiple flames along a path. So single flame is good, multiple flames along a path. And then with all these, you have this advanced tab and you have things like turbulent, jag, opacity. I'm not going to go into all these now, but what you really can do is just really start to play around and make that flame so it's even more crazier or even more this way or that way. It's just about experimentation. Go in there, have fun, and you'll start to get a feel for what you can create, what you like, and what works for uh, different projects. But for now, I'm just going to come back to the basic. For this type of image, I think I'm going to use multiple flames along a path. I'm going to take this interval and find maybe sort of an in-between value here. Again, sometimes it's just watching this preview on screen, moving the slider back and forth, trying to find something that you like. I sort of like this where we're getting a little bit more of uh, the see-through area. So I'm going to try that and I will go ahead and click OK. But I may create a couple more, but I'm going to fast forward right now and then we'll stop once I have the assets we're going to use for this project. Okay, so I fast forward a little bit. And so what I've done is I've created a bunch of layers which are just different flames that I've generated using this flame generator. Uh, just so I have some different choices to use here when putting this composite together. So I'll just show you that there are a variety of different things. We don't need to go through them all and I won't use them all, but I just want to have choices. It's good to have options. But now let's move forward and look at how we're actually going to blend some of these flames together and we're going to do some masking and we're going to make this look like a realistic image. Okay, so I'm going to start with this top flame here and I have a mask applied to it. Let me just del delete that so I can show you what we've done here. So first thing you want to do is just position it, get it where you like, resize it if you need to, get it where you think you want it on the image. And then you may find that you need to do some masking. So you may not want to have it coming in front of all these grill bars. You may want it to look like it's actually going underneath into the grill there. So that's going to be the source of the flame, which we'll get to in a second. But so I'm just going to add a mask to that. And then I'll switch to make sure black is my foreground color. Because remember, black hides and white is going to show. Actually, first I need to grab my brush. So there's my brush tool. I just have a soft brush here. And you can use your bracket keys to resize. And so then... I may just come over these grill bars and I'm just going to touch here and then I'm actually going to shift click just to make sure I get a straight line and I'm going to come here. My flow is actually set really low. I'm going to raise it up a little bit and I will just click, click, shift click, 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 shift click. Now, 
I've gone too far, which isn't a problem because then you can just use X on your keyboard to change the color and then you can paint it back in. Now this will be a little bit easier if you have a tablet and a pen tool because it's just a little bit easier to control your hand movements. Uh, but it'll work with a mouse as well. You can do shift clicking for straight lines or you can just do things. And something else that's also helpful is if you hold down the R key, you can pull up the rotation tool and it just lets you rotate the image. So for example, if your hand, let me rotate this again. If your hand naturally wants to move this way and you want to paint that way, that is just an easier way to you paint in a particular direction. So again, that's the R, take the R key and you can just rotate. And then when you're done, if you hold down R and click reset view, then it's going to take it back to that original orientation. But anytime you just hold down R and it's great because if you have trouble moving your hand in one direction, you can just rotate it to whatever you need to and then reset that view as needed. Uh, but the other reason why you don't have to be perfect here is because the reality is with something like flame is flame is going to interact and move around these different grill bars here. So let me just show you if I come over here to my mask and if I jump to a mask, let me just hit alt so we can see the mask. If you alt click on a mask, you can show it, you can hide it. So if I alt click on this for a second and now let me take my brush, I'm going to take my flow way down to something like one. And when you have something like that set, then what it's going to do is it's going to let you slowly build up your paint, right? So you can just slowly have a little gray and then it's going to build up and it's going to build up. You can also drop your opacity. And if you drop your opacity, what that's going to do is that's going to set the upper limit. So if I set this at 50%, then no matter how many strokes I do, I'm not going to be able to go beyond that 50% gray. So opacity and flow, make sure you know how those works. And those are on my area of my mask right now which isn't going to come into play with this flame here. So I'm not going to worry about that, those strokes. But what you can do then, remember white shows and black is going to hide. So if I bring my white paint back, 50% for opacity, maybe flow is one. Then I could come and if I want to make this flame wrap around so it's all showing on both sides of this, then I can come over here and I can do it. And you can start to build up these areas where it looks like the flame is wrapping around the grill bar there. And this flame graphic has some transparency already. And you add in that and you get this dynamic thing. And it's going to look pretty realistic because it's just going to look like it's interacting the way flame does. And flame is semi-transparent. And so it is going to work and your masking doesn't have to be perfect. So the masking may not come into play, you know, terribly on these individual flames where it's going to be more of an issue is because you don't want these flames to just go down into nothing. There's going to have to be this source of flame down below. And that is something you're going to want to appear behind all these grill bars. And so you are going to have to do some masking. And I've set up a mask here, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But first, let me just come back to here. I'm going to grab my brush. I'll use my X key to switch back to black. I'll take this transparency back up. My flow is still at one. But what I'm going to do is just come and paint here just to bring back that grill bar paint here just little areas where I actually know that I want the flame to be hidden so it looks like it's actually going down underneath and maybe I don't want to see it at all there and again this is going to start to interact with the flame which is going to be down below here and that's what we're going to work on next so if I turn on this layer here it's this big sprawling flame underneath here now, obviously that looks terrible as is, and it can't be like that. But if I alt click over here, I have this uh, mask, which I created quickly uh, and is disabled. And we see we have some areas in here that I think I had some highlights on, but let me show you a trick if I wanted to bring back the black with all this. So here's a good trick for you to learn. So I'm gonna bring up my brush key and I'm painting with black. So if I'm painting with black on this mask, and I paint here, and I want look. Let me undo that. Control Z. Oops. So let me step back. Well, let me step back in here again. So if I'm painting with this, let me get my flow all the way up. Painting with black. Control Z to undo that. If I change from normal to overlay, it is not going to let me paint on this white. If I'm trying to paint on the white, it won't let me paint on the white. 
If I start painting here and I get to the edge, it's not going to let me to paint. So watch what happens if I come here. Then I can actually go in and fill these areas where I have these little areas where I think I was using this in a test of this. And I think I was adding some highlights. So we might bring back some of this. But just for starting points, I want you to show you how you can use this if you ever need to clean up a mask because it is not going to let you paint over those edges and onto that white. So the overlay uh, can be very helpful when you're when you're doing something like this and you're painting in black. And the same would be true of white if you had it in screen mode. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and alt click back and we have this here. And so now if I turn on this with the mask turned on, you can see that I have it hidden behind the uh, the grill bars here. Now my mask is incomplete over here and here uh, and it's imperfect some other places where we can we can touch it up but it's not going to matter over here and I'm going to show you why because um, I don't want this mask to extend all the way over here. Um, this mask here has a lot of detail here because it has all these individual bars but really I want to take my lasso tool and maybe I want this to be contained. Let me alt click out of here. I really want this area that's on fire where the fire is burning down below to maybe look something more like what I've drawn here, this haphazard shape. Uh, but if I come over onto my mask and I just try to fill with black, I'm going to lose the masking out of those grill bars. So this is where the power of groups comes into play because if you have a mask on a layer and then you put that layer within a group, so let me just come here on this layer and I'm going to hit control G. So now it's in a group. Now they have, I have an ability to apply a second mask at the group level. And if I do that now, I maintain these grill bars at the same time I'm constraining my mask to those, the bounds of that group there. And so that looks starting to look better. And so then if I come up here and I take this feather and if you know feather, let me go on my mask, you see that feather it's just going to soften that edge, soften that edge. So it's very good for blending. Let me alt click back so we can see. So I may add my feather, something like this. And then uh, that, then you start to see how it's going to interact with your other flames here. So this top flame here, now that I see it, I'm like, okay, I want this to be a little softer down below. So again, I get my brush flow. I'll take down way down again because it's easy to build up paint and so then with black I'm hiding and I'm just softening out sort of the edge of this just so it's going to blend a little bit better as it goes down into the grill. So we're starting to get some more now and so you can see how you can add this layer below to look like you have the, the grill on fire, the charcoal burning down below and now you have these flames coming up and, uh, and interacting up here. So I'm going to add a few more flames and then we'll see what we get. Okay, we've got all our flame in there now. We've got it looking pretty good. So at this point, I would probably just try to do a little cleanup and a few finishing touches. I can see a few issues where my mask, where I'm losing the grill bar here and here. So maybe I would come in and I would do a little cleanup. So let me zoom in just over here a little bit. And this is on my mask for the flame layer here. I don't want it to be showing through here. So let me just do this real quick. Again, take as much time as you need with this sort of thing. But in this instance, I think I can get away with just my lasso tool and come in here. And this should be coming out like that. I don't want this feather turned on, so let me go to that and set that, that back to zero. So again, just trial and error in Photoshop. Just take your time. Learn to use the tools that are at your disposal. So go like that, and I want that filled with black because I don't want the flame showing through there. So alt 
backspace and that'll bring back that grill bar there. And then let's see over here, there's sort of an issue here. And let's just see what happens if I take this. And it looks like this should extend out. So let me use my magnetic lasso tool or polygonal lasso tool in this case, just so I can get a straight line coming out here. This is all dark, so I think it's going to work out just fine if I just sort of do something like this. Again, I think I'll be able to hide any imperfections. So again, Alt Backspace to bring that back. It's a little weird there, but I don't think it's going to matter in the final image. So I'll go like that. I'll leave that. I won't worry about that for now. So at this point, a couple other things. Uh, if you had all this flame here as a light source, you would maybe have some of these shadows being filled in on this side of the stake. So I might come down here to where I have my actual image there, right? And so I'll hit Control J to duplicate that. And then what, actually I don't need the Control J. Let me just actually get rid of that copy just to show you, throw that away. What I'm gonna do is do a curves layer right here. And Curves is great for all kinds of exposure adjustments. So I'm just going to drag everything up, all the midtones up. And then what I'll do is just Alt Backspace to fill that with black. Alt Backspace. And I can also clip that by holding down my Alt key and just clipping it. So it's just going to affect the layer below. Now it's below everything else, all the flames anyway. So it's not going to affect the flames anyways. But still a good practice just to clip that. So it's just affecting this layer here. And now what you can do is you can come in and once again, I'm going to go to white and I'll get a soft brush, something like this. And I'll come back over here, flow one. And then what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to come on here and I'm going to start to paint in some of that extra exposure adjustments, just, just to set up some areas where yes, this flame is going to be a light source. And so it's going to start to fill in some of the shadows here on the stake, right? So these are gonna get filled in some, and then we'll be able to adjust this a little farther in a second. So just filling in some of the shadows there, maybe something like that. And then of course, if I overdid it here, I can always come and I can lower the opacity. So lower it down, bring it back up, and see you're just adding in just a little bit of that shadow detail back on this side of the stake since you do have the flames. Then as another finishing touch, if you had a hot flame like this, what you would do is you would get that heat distortion. You would have sort of the heat coming here. And so that's gonna blur things a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is above everything else, I'm just gonna create a new layer. And I'm gonna use Control Alt Shift uh, plus E to stamp a visible layer. So that's Control Alt Shift plus E and it stamps everything that's visible. That would be Command Option Shift on a Mac. And so I have the new layer here, and then to that I will just apply a little bit of a Gaussian blur, blur. not a lot, you know, some, something in the one or two range depending on the, the size of your photo, just a slight blur. And then you also sometimes get a distortion with that. So I might go in under here under the filter gallery, and I'm going to find under distort this glass, and f under glass choose frosted, frosted glass. And so a little bit of an effect like this. And so scaling, keep the distortion really low, one, smoothness, I'm gonna go with two, and then scaling sort of pretty pretty low, 50%. Go ahead and click OK. And then even with that, that might be okay because I'm gonna lower the opacity of this. And also, of course, I'm gonna mask it out so it doesn't show everywhere. So I will start by clicking Alt plus my mask button to do a black mask. So everything's hidden now. And then I will go ahead and I will get my brush tool, soft edge, and I have white. So I'm painting with white. My flow is low. So I'm just going to slowly start to bring that back sort of in the areas where we are going to have the heat rising up. But I'm going to keep it off the flames in the grill here. So I'm just choosing this as sort of a foreground element here. And that's a little heavy handed, of course, but so I'll just come in here and I will start to knock it back a decent amount just so you get something like that. So you start to get this distortion effect with the heat. And so I think we're ready to call this just about done. One final thing you could do is maybe we'll go ahead in here with our curves and we will just maybe bump up the contrast a little bit. So we'll raise that up. We'll do that 
standard S curve. See if we like that. Uh, and you can always lower down the strength with the opacity. So that's pretty good. We could do some other things. We could darken the edges, but that looks pretty good. So let's just grab this image here. I'm going to control J. I'm just going to bring this all the way up to the top just so we can see as we started with this and then we end up with an image that looks like this. So again, started with this, we end up with an image like that. And that is a pretty huge difference. And that is all done because of the flame generator, render flames in Photoshop. And you have all this control, you have all this creative ability. And so you can create something really cool starting with an image like this and then ending with something like that. So render flames, you find it under filter, render flame. Remember you have to have that path and a selected path to make it work, but please go play around. And if you like this video, please smash that subscribe button below. Go ahead and hit the thumbs up on this video, share it, and thank you, and I hope to see you soon.